Let me share my screen. And this is our topic for today. Electrochemical energy and nuclear energy. So we'll be starting off with electrochemical energy and the corresponding reactions that is happening in what we call as the electrochemical cell or simply the cell. Now, let me just enlarge this one. Okay, so when we speak of electrochemical energy uh, or nuclear energy, it has something to do with the cell or what we call as the battery. So a battery is a popular power source during emergencies, especially if there is power outage and it's usually used to power small devices and a lot of the toys, your toys then. Now, a battery is portable, so it's self-contained electrochemical power source that consists of one or more voltage cells. So a battery may just consist of one voltage cell or several cells arranged in series. Now, for example, the 1.5 volt battery used to power flashlights and many consumer electronic devices are single voltage cells. Now, greater voltages can be achieved by, as I have mentioned a while ago, using multiple cells as in the light of a 12-volt automotive battery. Okay? When cells are connected in series, the battery produces a voltage that is equivalent to the sum of the voltages, of course, of the individual cells. Now, higher voltages can also be achieved by using multiple batteries in series. So if you have several cells already inside the battery, the battery can also be uh, connected in series to achieve higher voltages. Now, batteries are able to provide power because of the electrochemical reactions occurring within the cell. So we will be looking into this electrochemical reaction that is happening in the cell. So there are two types of electrochemical reactions actually uh, that is happening in the cell, but we can sum them up into one particular overall reaction representative of the two. Now in electrochemical reactions, primary reason for such happening is the transfer of electrons. So electrons are transferred from one species to another. So one species will lose electron and of course another one will gain what that particular species has given away or has lost. In order to keep track of what loss of a particular species that loses electron and that particular species that gains electron, we assign what we call oxidation numbers. So let me annotate. So when we speak of oxidation numbers class, they are actually the charges that you see written on the chemical itself or on the symbol of the chemical itself. So if the chemical is in the form of a compound, there's a need for you to write it in elemental form. Like in the case of, for example, class, what I mean is elemental form is in the case of HCl, you have to write it in elemental form consisting of hydrogen, which has an oxidation number of one and chlorine, which has also an oxidation number of one. So the two having the same oxidation numbers, only different in signs. This one, the HCl or the hydrochloric acid or the hydrogen chloride is already neutral because you have one positive and one negative charge. This two positive and negative charges that I have written on the elements comprising your hydrogen chloride or your hydrochloric acid are what we call as the oxidation numbers. Okay, now the take into example the reaction uh, between metal zinc and the acid uh, H plus in this particular reaction that you see. The reaction is already written in the form that the charges the charges or the oxidation states of the elements present in the reaction are written. But actually, the true reaction that is happening is this one. So let me just clear this, the drawings. The true reaction that happens is within 
zinc and hydrogen chloride, or in this case, your hydrochloric acid. Your zinc reacting with hydrochloric acid forming your zinc chloride and your H2 gas. So you see the gas here uh, that is being produced and you have zinc chloride as the uh, metal, uh, shall I say, the metal chloride that is formed out of the reaction of these two. When we write the reaction in elemental form, that way we can see the oxidation states of the elements. So it's the way it's, it's written this way. So you have zinc reacting with, so the, the original thing that it's written here is actually reacting with hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid. I keep on saying hydrogen chloride. It's hydrochloric acid because it's an, it's an aqueous form. So it's an acid reacting with zinc, uh, forming here zinc chloride. So in here you have zinc chloride. So notice, since, notice that since we already did not represent the chlorine uh, atom here or element here and the same thing with the chlorine element here, what is reflected here is simply the oxidation state of zinc. So when we write zinc chloride, it's actually ZnCl2. Now you've learned in your senior high and I'm sure in your chemistry then that whenever a compound is written this way, the subscript that is written on the element before a particular element is actually its oxidation state. So these two that you see as a subscript of chlorine is actually the oxidation state of zinc. That is why you get to see here a zinc with a two plus. Now, why is it there's no number written here before the zinc? This chlorine gas, or rather, yes, your chlorine gas or your elemental chlorine is negative one in oxidation state. I will show to you later a periodic table with the oxidation states of the elements present. So it's one. So when you place it here, it's understood already to be one. That this being one, you don't anymore write it there. So it's understood that this is one already. So it's a crisscross pattern as what you have learned in your high school chemistry you write this one here you write this one here so if it's a one we don't write it anymore so it's understood to be one but since going back to this reaction that uh, shown here since this is a reaction written in elemental elemental form that way you get to see the oxidation states of hydrogen and zinc so it's the way it's written now so zinc plus two because the oxidation state of zinc in zinc chloride is plus two plus hydrogen gas. So it liberates during the reaction of zinc metal with hydrochloric acid, it liberates hydrogen gas. So you can see this gas or vapor thing like uh, on top of the beaker. And this is the corresponding other product form, the zinc chloride, okay? So zinc here, you don't see any number written on it. It's said to be neutral. It doesn't have any oxidation state. So its oxidation state is zero and your hydrogen has an oxidation state of one. It's understood to be one if no number is written there. Zinc is already common sense tell you is plus two in oxidation number and hydrogen gas is also zero. Whenever you don't see any number written in the form of a, an ion, positive or negative charge on top of a particular element, then that particular element is neutrally charged or is said to be neutral. Okay, so what is actually happening in the reaction here of zinc metal with hydrochloric acid? So let us scroll down. So initially zinc has an oxidation number of zero and H has an oxidation number of plus one as illustrated to you already in the formula of hydrochloric acid in here. However, after the reaction, the oxidation number of zinc became two here and your hydrogen became zero. If you notice the oxidation number of zinc increased from zero to two, while that of hydrogen decreased from one to zero. This is because during the reaction, since zinc became uh, at plus two from an oxidation state of zero, then it has lost two of its electron. Because in the neutral form or any atom, 
with no oxidation state, for example, in here I'll just write zinc. If it has no oxidation number written here, it's understood to have the same number of electrons and protons. Now, once zinc give away two of its electron, then it will have two more positive protons than the number of electrons that it has, which results to a positive two oxidation state. So meaning zinc gave two electrons now, making it positively charged because it has more now of the protons number uh, with number two or two protons than the number of electrons. So before, when it is having oxidation state zero, number of protons and electrons are said to be equal. So your zinc lost two electrons, okay? It lost two electrons while H gained the electron that it lost. So there has to be a receiver of the electrons that zinc gave away. And zinc, uh, and rather hydrogen is the receiver in this case, okay? Now talking about who's receiving and who's giving brings about the topic of the main topic for this afternoon, which is your oxidation reduction reactions or redox as uh, as. Uh, written in shorthand notation. So redox reaction, okay? Reduction oxidation reaction. So who is being reduced and who reduces it or which PC is being reduced and who is responsible for reducing it? They have their corresponding name. So let me uh, scroll down. Okay. Just erase, oh, sorry. Okay, we we'll leave the we'll clear na lang everything. Okay, so what about redox reactions or reduction oxidation reactions? So please don't hesitate to raise concerns or questions if you have any. Uh, you may place it on the chat box. That way I can address them right away. So we go to redox reaction or oxidation. Miss Marion got disconnected and she can came back because her laptop got broken. Okay, this is noted. Let her message me uh, privately, okay, after the class. Thank you. So now, since electrochemical reactions involve the transfer of electrons, so we have in the first place the production, the, uh, the production of electricity or we have produced current due to the transfer or the movement of electrons, two reactions are simultaneously occurring during the process. One is oxidation and the other one is reduction. So oxidation, one is being oxidized and another one is being reduced. Take note that these reactions is simultaneously occurring. So it can't be that you should only have oxidation or it can't be that you will only have reduction. It should be both occurring at the same amount of time. Now take note of this. During oxidation, a species loses electrons. In our example, it is zinc that is losing electrons. So we say that zinc is being oxidized. So thus, in the example above, zinc underwent oxidation. Zinc lost two electrons to go from neutral zinc to the zinc plus two ion. A species is reduced or undergoes reduction when it gains electrons. So take note, if a species loses electrons, I'd like to use a different one here. During oxidation, in oxidation, a species loses electron. And zinc was the one that is being oxidized. During reduction, a species is reduced or undergoes reduction when it gains electrons. So in our example, the species that is being reduced or the species that accepts the electrons that zinc gave away is hydrogen. So each of the H plus written 
in our chemical reaction gains an electron and they combine to form the hydrogen gas, which is also being liberated in the course of the reaction. So take note, I will emphasize this. The species that gives away electron is being oxidized. The species that accepts the electrons is being reduced. Now that brings about the name of the species that we have in our reaction. The one that is being oxidized is said to be zinc. And as such, we say that hydrogen is the, okay, the species that is reduced is the oxidizing agent. So what is being reduced in this case is referred to as the oxidizing agent. Zinc is undergo oxidation. The one that, that oxidizes zinc is your hydrogen, which is referred to as the hydrogen in here. Or hydrogen is the one that is being reduced and it is oxidizing your zinc. Okay, in example, hydrogen oxides Hydrogen plus oxide zinc by taking electron from it. By the way, class, this is oxidizes. There is a typo error here. And the example, your hydrogen oxidizes zinc. And as such, we say that zinc undergoes oxidation. In the process, since hydrogen oxidizes zinc, it is being reduced. Okay, so H is the oxidizing agent, and since it is the oxidizing agent, it is being reduced in the process. The species that is oxidized is the one that is reducing your H. So it is referred to as the reducing agent. So in our case, we can write here, let me annotate to simplify what's, what is written in the paragraph. Your zinc undergoes oxidation. And it is the reducing agent. Your hydrogen undergoes reduction and it is the oxidizing agent. I think it's very self-explanatory. If zinc is being oxidized, then the other one must be the one responsible for its oxidation. So it's the oxidizing agent. If hydrogen is being reduced in the process or is undergoing reduction, then some species, in this case that would be zinc, must be responsible for it undergoing reduction. And as such, we call it the reducing agent. Okay, so take note of that. Again, the species that gives the electron is the one that is oxidized. The one that receives is the species that undergoes reduction. Okay, so we clear all drawings now. We proceed to what is written below. So now we go to the rules in assigning oxidation number. And after this, I will show to you the periodic table again as a review and tell you how you can uh, determine the oxidation number or the oxidation state of a particular element based on where it is located in your periodic table. So how do we assign oxidation numbers? So elements in their elemental form have an oxidation number of zero. Meaning of the elemental form is it does not have any charge or it is not in ion form. So when you speak of an ion, it's either having positive or negative charge. If you don't see any charge, then meaning it's in its standard elemental form, understood to have an oxidation number of zero. Now, the oxidation number of a monatomic ion, a standalone ion, so monatomic meaning one, is the same as its charge. So one ion, for example, I'll just write here an example. For example, in the case of sodium, so it's a monatomic ion because it's only one. So its charge, its charge here, which is positive one, is automatically its oxidation number. 
Now, non-metals tend to have negative oxidation number. Take note of this. Non-metals have negative oxidation numbers, although some may be positive in the case of other compounds, especially polyatomic uh, ions and even com uh, in compounds or polyatomic ions. So not all nonmetals are negative on oxidation number at all times. So when your nonmetal is uh, written in the form or is part of the elements comprising a polyatomic, an ion or cation, then that nonmetal may not be negative in each oxidation number. Now, take note of this. Oxygen is always having an oxidation number of negative 2. This is very easy, except in the case of the peroxide ion, in which it has an oxidation number of negative 1. So by any chance, anybody here who knows what's a peroxide ion? So most of the time, our oxygen is having these oxidations number, oxidation number of negative two, except when it is in the peroxide form. Now, can anybody here share in the class if he knows uh, what's the peroxide ion? How do we write a peroxide ion? Anyone in class? A peroxide ion? Like in Hydrogen peroxide, so the one that is commonly used in disinfecting wounds. We call it agua oxenada or hydrogen peroxide. So we have the peroxide ion there. Anybody who knows what's a peroxide ion? What's the formula of a peroxide ion? Okay, a peroxide ion has this formula. Okay, let me check in the chat box. Somebody wrote something. Has negative two, two charge. Okay, this is your peroxide, an ion. Your hydrogen peroxide, which is a common disinfectant, is H2O2. So what happens is your hydrogen, which is originally plus one in oxidation state, this peroxide is negative two. So that is why now you could see that the two, the negative two charge there was crisscrossed, okay? And this one is understood to be the one that you see here. So it's not written anymore. So your hydrogen peroxide is written as H2O2, but the peroxide and ion is this. So this is the only exception. Since you have two atoms of oxygen and the net uh state here is negative two. Though in this case, your oxygen has an oxidation state of negative one or an oxidation number of negative one. The rest, in most cases, your oxygen is negative two in oxidation number. Now, hydrogen is, all, is negative when bonded to a metal, but most of the time, it's positive one when bonded to a non-metal. So, duha lang man. Positive one when bonded to a non-metal and negative when bonded to a metal. Now the sum of an of the oxidation number of, of, of the oxidation numbers rather in a neutral compound is zero. In the case of let's say NaCl, this is a neutral compound. So the sum of the oxidation number here would be zero. You have plus one for sodium and negative one for chlorine. So giving you a net oxidation state of zero because sodium chloride is a neutral compound. And last, the sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion is the charge on the ion. Again, the sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion is the charge on the ion. Let me explain this class, but I need to clear everything that I've write, written here. Okay, in the case of, can you give me a polyatomic anion, please? Anybody here who can give me an example of a polyatomic anion? You can paste it on the chat box. Example of a polyatomic anion so I can explain what number five here means. A polyatomic anion. Okay, let me see. Sulfate, thank you. Uh, pearl, sulfate, thank you. Labto, John, 
this. Let's see. That's correct. So when you have sulfate, SO4, negative 2. This negative 2 class is to be understood to, do, to be the net oxidation state of these two substances in here. So that tells you, let me just change my phone, that if oxygen should have a negative 2 oxidation state, sulfur, for this to be negative, net negative 2 should be positive 6. How do you know that, Miss Ali? Because the charge, the net charge in this polyatomic anion should be equal to the charge reflected on such a polyatomic anion. So your sulfur is positive 6 and your oxygen is negative 2 times how many you have here? 4. So that would be minus 8. So that would be negative 2. So then that tells us that sulfur here then has an oxidation state of 6. And this negative 2 is the net oxidation charge, or rather the net charge in your polyatomic anion. The same principle applies when we talk about, for example, the permanganate ion or the phosphate anion. This charge that you see here is the charge of the 2 elements present in your polyatomic anion already. The net charge that is. For your permanganate, the negative one is already the net charge uh, or the net oxidation state of the elements manganese and oxygen for your permanganate anion. Okay, we don't have any problem if the compound is neutral because the sum of the oxidation states for that would be at all times equal to zero. Now, do you have any question for now here on the rules in assigning oxidation number before I show to you the periodic table and how you get the oxidation number as a review for the elements written on it? None. Yes. None. Yes, John. No question. Yes. No question. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you're asking some. Okay, so let me share with you a particular uh, periodic table. Okay. Do you see the periodic table that he... Uh, okay, can you give me a reaction if you can see the periodic table? Okay, thank you. Now, in the periodic table here, you could see that here in group 1A, most of the time, the elements here have an oxidation state of positive 1. Okay, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. In here, in group 2B, you have here positive 2. So we have uh, beryllium, Magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. Now in here, the oxidation state depends on the particular compound in which your metal is written or is a part of. So in the case of scandium, most of the time it's three. You have yttrium here, three. Okay, the rest have several oxidation states. So in the case of vanadium you can, and, and titanium, you have either four or three. In here, you have either four, five, three, or two. Now, in here, you have in the case of boron, aluminum, gallium, indium. Uh, I forgot the name of this, tellurium. So this is all having positive three as the oxidation number. And this one may have four or two. Okay, plumbus or plumbic in the case of lead. And you can have stannous or stannic in the case of tin. You have germanium, which is four, silicon, which is four, and carbon, which can have positive four, negative four, or positive two, depending again on where your carbon is or what's the element or what's the compound in which your carbon is a part of. Because the oxidation state of your elements in the first place, if you're talking about polyatomic ions, depends on the net charge of that particular 
polyatomic ion. Nitrogen can be three, negative three, five, four, two. And you have all of this. So I'll be sharing this uh, periodic table to you so that you will be more acquainted with the common on the probable oxidation states or oxidation number of the elements as they are written in the periodic table. But in the case of polyatomic ions class, I suggest that you first check the net charge on that particular polyatomic ion. That way you will be able to know the correct charge of the other elements present on it. If that particular polyatomic an ion has, a, has oxygen, oxygen will always be, as part of our rule in assigning oxidation number, will always be negative too. So meaning the other elements that's with oxygen in, this, in that particular polyanion will be the one that will be varying in its oxidation state. That way, the net oxidation state of that particular polyanion will be followed. Okay, but oxygen would really be negative too. Same thing with hydrogen, especially in the case of three elements, polyatomic and ions, your hydrogen would always be positive one, just like your oxygen, which is negative two. But in the case of ions in which there's only two elements, hydrogen and other one, there's a tendency also for your hydrogen to have a charge of negative one. Okay. So this is your periodic table. I think you have your uh, hard copy of your periodic table. If not, you can keep this because it has the oxidation states in here. But there are downloadable periodic tables in the internet, which has the more complete information available in terms of the properties of the elements that are written on it. Okay, this one, I just picked this up because I only want to show to you the oxidation states. So here... Your transition metals, your transition elements here have are expected to have varying oxidation states. This one is your inner transition because this is your lanthanide and your actinide series and actually they are coming from here. It's just like you took it out from that particular part of your periodic table and I'll just like, uh, shall I say, expand it and this is your, that is what it's referred to as inner transition. Okay, so this is how we determine the oxidation states of the elements. So that you will not be bored and you will not get sleepy, I will project something in here. And I'd like you to write in the chat box your answer for the oxidation state of the following, uh, the oxidation state of the elements in the following compounds. Let me just check class. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let me share my this screen now. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you see my screen? The heading is practice problems on redox reaction. Do you see it? Okay. Yes, miss. Okay. Can you answer for the number one? What's written in number one? Uh, let me just minimize this one. That way it will appear bigger. Okay, only number one. So it says here, determine the oxidation number of the elements in each of the following compounds. Okay, let's do this. So what you're going to do first, get a piece of paper there as an exercise. This is not graded, but of course I want you to participate because it's also for your own good. Copy the elements here. In a little while, after a minute or after 20 seconds, if you're done copying, I will project the periodic table that I have projected a while ago. Let's see who will come up with the correct assignment of oxidation states or numbers to the elements that are present in this particular compound here. I have placed here six. Okay, I give you 20 seconds to finish copying so I can project the table, periodic table that is.
Okay, are you done copying? I will call out names later if you have tried and that and you can show us your answer in the chat box or if you have a piece of paper there you can open your cam and show us your answer so uh so that this will be something that is shared by everybody okay are you done copying and i see a thumbs up sign if you are done copying thank you for that marianne about the rest did not bother to copy <laughs> so we will know who's with us and who's already asleep there okay now i will show to you the predictable class which i shared with you a while ago and you will try to answer what's the oxidation state of each of the elements that are written in this compound okay let me check let me share again you share I'll give you five minutes to do that. There you go. I'm just here. If you have any questions, giving you it's 2.14, we'll end 2.20. Okay, three minutes class. I hope you're doing it right.
Miss, can you try answering number one? Okay, we'll answer them together. Okay, when time is up, two minutes. Marianne, we'll answer them together. Okay. Or we can, you can show your answer to us, or a classmate will show his or her answer to the class that way we can check whether they're answering it right or not. Okay, one minute. Okay, okay, time is up. Let's see. So I'll change what I'm showing here. I'll go to the page where we're supposed to write the answer. Okay, now before I give my answer to this one, it would be better for me to check whether you're able to absorb what I've discussed to you a few minutes ago. So anybody in the class who can share what should be the oxidation state of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen in the case of the formula carbonic acid? This is actually carbonic acid. That way we can check and then we will double check by the use of a solution. Okay, you can type your answer in the chat box or if you want, you can open your cam and show us to you your answer for H2CO3 where that's carbonic acid. Uh, Marianne, would you like to try? Okay, here, we have an answer. So we'll just put it here. So lab to John is saying hydrogen is plus one, carbon is plus four, and oxygen plus six. Now in the first place class, you are seeing here a neutral compound. So there's no net charge on it. So let's see, we'll annotate here. Let's see if what John did is correct or what he shared to us is correct. I'll use a different font. Okay, now H is positive one. So this is having plus two here. Oxygen is most of the time negative two and it has three here. So we have three atoms of oxygen. And carbon in the middle is only one. Now these two should be multiplied. So we have one times two. And this should also be multiplied plus negative two times three plus. Carbon is one, so I'll hear plus one times the oxidation state of carbon, which we do not know. 
this should be equated to zero. Why zero? Because this is a neutral compound. So let's see. So this is a two and a minus six, so that's minus four. So carbon should have an oxidation state of four. So what John, uh, what John shared to us is correct, if not Iho, for the oxygen, which is positive six. Because your oxygen, I think it's a mistype, your oxygen should be negative two. We're asking for the oxidation state. So oxygen, your answer would be this actually. So I'll put here, I use a different color. So the, your answer should be hydrogen is positive one, oxygen is negative two, and carbon based on what we have solved is positive four. So when you are asked to determine the oxidation states of elements present in a compound, you are to write the oxidation numbers or their charges uh, as they appear now in the compound that is given. Okay, so John, thank you for sharing your answer. I think it's just a mistype in the case of your oxygen. Your oxygen should be negative two times three. That should be negative six, okay? Any questions so far with letter A, your carbonic acid? Okay, I need to admit somebody. Okay, any question? Okay, now I close this one. What is the oxid uh, what is the oxidation state of nitrogen? Actually, this is nitrogen gas. So what is the oxidation state of this? Okay, I have an answer in the chat box. Zero. Very good. Just like hydrogen. Just like O2, if it stand alone, they have an oxidation state of zero. So this one has an oxidation state of zero. Now I will be waiting for those who can share to me the oxidation state of each of the elements present in the polyatomic anion. So this is a polyatomic anion comprising of zinc, oxygen, and hydrogen. Okay, who has done this? Okay, I will forget. I will wait for somebody to write in the chat box their answer. We'll check later on. Okay, I have one. Silab to gyapon. Can I have a uh, new positive miss ang one? Uh, what do you mean, Iho? Hydrogen. Ah, okay. You mean hydrogen is positive one. Okay. Can I have other entries here aside, aside from John Mark? Or I don't want to call out names, but if it would be John Mark that I'll be seeing here, always putting the answer in the chat box, then I will call out names. Anybody here? So John Mark's answer is zinc is plus two, oxygen is negative two, hydrogen is plus one. Anyone? Okay, let me see who's in my class. Kier Bolero. Uh, shall we know your answer, Kier? If you don't have a microphone, you can uh, place it on the chat box. Bolero Kier. What's your answer here? Type ko lang ni sure. Sige. Okay, try ta be. And the same thing with Carlos Manuel Gimbal. Can you type your answer for letter C on the chat box so we'll have three answers to compare? Um, miss, same kami answer, miss, ni John Mark, miss. Mm, same kami ni John Mark. Answer. Basi karon ang tanan ko nga tawagon, di same lang answer kay John Mark, ha? Sige, we're waiting for Kier. What about Daniel Miguel Ong? Daniel Miguel Ong? Are you there?
Daniel Miguel Ong. Oh, he is here. Are you there, Daniel? Thank you, Care. Zinc is too, oxygen is, is I'm having connection issue. You must screen the block starter. Hmm. Okay. Sige. So we'll have, we'll check for the oxidation states that were provided here. Okay, we'll do that. So uh, for this particular compound, okay, we'll have, we'll have the element zinc. Most of the time zinc is plus two. Let's see if it's plus two in this case. Oxygen. Most of the time, it's negative to except, except when, except when you have the case of the peroxide, the molan to exception. So meaning, mas sure kita sa oxygen kaysa kay zinc. Then hydrogen is plus one. Okay. Now these two are in a parenthesis and has a subscript of four. This entire thing class, this polyatomic and ion, I will change the font so you will see, has a net charge of negative two. That already includes the zinc. So how do we check or how we, do we determine whether the zinc, which is often, oftentimes has an oxidation state of plus two, has really an oxidation state of plus two. So we will check it in here. So we will change color okay so we'll have oxygen i'll try this one first so oxygen okay you have negative two times four where i where did i get the four here negative two and then hydrogen which is one times four and i will have zinc is only one so i have one times the oxidation state of zinc the net charge of this polyatomic and ion is negative two. Okay, so we will continue. This is negative. This is negative eight plus four. This is negative four, right? So if this negative four is transferred on the other side, that would be positive four minus two. So zinc has a charge of two. So as expected, this one is correct. The oxidation state of zinc is 2, oxygen is negative 2, and hydrogen is plus 1. The, this particular polyatomic and ion has a net charge of negative 2. So in this case, the answer of, let me go back to the chat box. So the first one who provided us with the answer is John. So this is correct, John. And in the case of here, also correct. So thank you to these two gentlemen in here. Okay, so your answer for the oxidation state of zinc is also plus two. Now, you have to base your determination of the oxidation state of each of the elements first on these two uh, gases because most of the time class, their oxidation state is fixed as negative two and plus one. There's only one exception for each of these two in which the oxidation state is not negative two and plus one. So it should be in this case like this, okay? Now, any questions so far before we go to the nitrite and ion? Because if we have three, that would be nitrate. So this one is nitrite, nitrite and ion. Now, can I have an answer on the chat box for this, for the nitrite and ion for its oxidation state. Thank you, okay. Now I, they are more game. So we have, in the case of Pearl, nitrogen is three, oxygen is negative two. In the case of Carlos, Gimbal, uh, nitrogen is four. Kyle is also nitrogen is four. John Mark, uh, I think Iho, your ano, your charges are up are interchanged. So oxygen should be negative two, and nitrogen should be positive three. You got. Uh, I think you have mistyped it. And 
here we have three for nitrogen and oxygen should be, oxygen is always negative. It's always negative. So some of you wrote oxygen as positive. Maybe mistype in a hurry. So let's check. Okay, let's check whether I still have three more answers here. Three, two, four, negative two. Four, negative two. To another one. Okay, so let's see who got it right. So we'll have here. Oh, come. Okay. Now for this one, I will clear first what I have written on top. That way I will have space. So for this, you have nitrogen and you have oxygen. Again, we start with the fact that oxygen will always be negative two. And since the net charge here is negative one, nitrogen times one, so this should be our determination of the uh, oxidation state of nitrogen plus two times negative two should always be, uh, should be equal to negative one. So in here we could see that nitrogen should be a three. So those who answered three negative two, you are correct. So I'm on a nitrogen. So you have one atom of nitrogen. You don't know the oxidation state of this. This is the one we're looking, trying to find the oxidation state. Oxygen has two atoms. You multiply it to its oxidation state. The net charge of the polyatomic anion is negative one. So this is negative four. So this would be plus four. So this should be three. So those who answered three, negative two, you got it right. For those who did not, Okay, it's okay. Just practice. Continue practicing. Now, what about this uh, compound here? Lithium hydride. What is the oxidation state of lithium and hydrogen? Okay, I wait. Lithium plus one. Hydrogen is negative. Lithium, lithium. Okay, lithium, lithium. I've seen one correct answer already. Did you recall about the assigning of oxidation state to hydrogen, which I shared to you a while ago? Let me again share a different screen. So you will answer correctly here. Now, where is that? Uh, is this it? No. Let me check. This is it. No. Wait, class, huh? Uh, here, so again, new share. Before I go back to that one, how do we assign oxidation state to nitrogen? Says here, hydrogen is negative one when bonded to a metal. And hydrogen is positive one when bonded to a non-metal. So hydrogen, just like oxygen, can only have two possible values, negative one and one, or negative two and negative one for oxygen. So for metals, since metals are already positive class, so the alangan man niya positive, man siya gyapon kay positive na ang metal, so dapat negative na yung oxidation state. So for non-metals, non-metals are negative in oxidation state, so it will be positive. So let's go back to your screen. I sorry, I stopped sharing. Let's go back to where what we're working on. Okay, share. So here, lithium. So I saw something in the chat box. Correct. So Beatrice. Okay. So amo na siya. So atuhin pakita ko sa inyo. Lithium is a metal. It's in group one, so it's automatic to have an oxidation state of plus one. And hydrogen is bonded to a metal, automatic, it will have a negative oxidation state. So plus one for lithium, negative one for hydrogen. So we have the last one. We have the, what is this? Ferric oxide. Ferric oxide. What is the oxidation state of iron and oxygen? So we have two things here, two elements rather. Iron and oxygen. So we have four here. We have three here. Oxygen is negative two. 
and there's no net charge. So what should be the oxidation state of iron? We need to master this exercise because you cannot correctly balance redox reaction. That is what I mentioned a while ago. I can't jump to balancing unless you correctly assign oxidation numbers or states to the elements present in your reaction in the first place. So if you do not know this, it's impossible to be able to balance correctly your chemical reaction. So there's one answer here, eight. The other one is four. So let's check. So I will have here the oxidation state of iron times three plus that of oxygen, which is negative two times four is equal to zero. So this is an eight or negative two, correct. So you have iron is three. Kasi isa lahat niya ang formula. So you have here Fe, then you have here 3, and this is 8. So your iron will have, if the formula is correctly written, your iron will have an oxidation state of 8 over 3. Correct, Kerry. If this is the way it's written, I think there's something wrong with this. I got this in, uh, online. Maybe it's a 2. It's not a... Four. Oxidation state of iron or the oxidation state of iron can I can only be two or three. So there, there must be something wrong with the formula, the compound of the formula itself. But nonetheless, mathematically, this is how you compute for the oxidation state of iron. Okay. You equate the sum of the oxidation states of each of the elements to zero because this is a neutral compound. When we speak class of oxidation state, actually, when we answer 8 over 3, it's wrong. Because when you speak of oxidation states, they are always in whole number forms, either positive or negative. So in this case, there's something wrong with it. Unless that there's a typo error here and you have an Fe2O4. If it's an Fe2O4, then this is divided by 2, so you will have 4 for iron, which is correct because if you do crisscross 4 here and then you have 2 here, so that would be giving you a compound that is this one, not this, okay? Because if it's 3, as I've said, your oxidation state will not be a whole number, okay? Now, before I go to the next part of our lesson, I'll give you a breather, a five-minute breather. Just close your cam. You give me drink water. That's all. I go to the bathroom for a bathroom break. Do you have any question here? Any question so far? Okay, so I will stop sharing. My time here is 2.41. You come back. 2.45. You have a four-minute break. I'll pause the recording for now. Come back 2.41. Okay, drink something or you can have your screen break, your four-minute screen break. Okay. Okay, class, I'm back. So in the case of care, I will share to you the periodic table care. I will share it in Canvas later. Okay, and I will provide you also problem sets on determining oxidation states because it seems like and uh, not everybody is uh, proficient on it or who knows it uh, fully well, okay? So remind me if I did not uh, place it in Canvas for everybody to use uh, after we're done, okay? So uh, are you there already? You're done with your break? We will, I will share again my screen. Okay, we will continue with our topic on oxidation states. Okay, so it's important, very important class that you know how to assign the correct oxidation number to the elements present in your compound or in a polyatomic ion. So if you know that already, then we can now do balancing redox reactions. 
if it's something that is to if it's a concern please practice determining oxidation states of elements now we go to balancing redox reaction so perhaps the easiest way to balance the equation of an oxidation reduction reaction is to is to use the half reaction method or via the half reaction method now this involves treating the oxidation and reduction as two separate processes but actually class they are not separate processes huh? as mentioned already they are simultaneous processes occurring of course simultaneously but in this case we will just treat them separately as if you have a separate oxidation reaction and you have a separate reduction reaction and then after that you combine the two to attain the balance equation for that provided overall reaction that you need to balance. So simply put in our language class, ang original nga chemical reaction nga ginhatag sa inyo, inyo na siya anay itungaon sa duha ka reaction, isa oxidation, isa reduction. How will you be able to create your two separate reactions, the oxidation and the re reduction reaction. You can create such after you determine which of the elements present are being oxidized and which of the elements present is being uh, reduced. Then you can write a separate oxidation reaction and write a separate uh, reduction reaction. So as to the steps, so we will have the balancing of redox reactions using half reaction method in acidic solution if the problem class asks you to balance redox reactions in basic solution it's a continuation of the procedures the set of procedures in acidic solution now again i will speak in a language so you would understand better kung ang problem ay ginhatag ipabalanse ang reaction sa inyo using basic solution there's a need for you to start balancing it first. So, i-balance ko nung siya anay, treating it as an acidic solution. And then continue, after you're done with the steps under acidic solution, continue with the other steps, with the other steps for basic solution. Okay? Because if you use the half-reaction method class, you will have to treat two separate reactions, which you will need to combine right after you are done balancing. So we will go to this uh, part by part, okay? Now, steps in balancing redox reactions using the method of half reactions. And we are going to talk for now about balancing in acidic solution. Now, what's the first step? Assign oxidation numbers to determine what is oxidized and what is reduced. So just like what I mentioned a while ago, for you to be able to write separately, the oxidation and the reduction reactions, you need to know what is being oxidized and what is being reduced. How will you know what element is being oxidized and which element is being reduced? You will know by assigning the correct oxidation numbers to them. After that, you write the oxidation and reduction half reactions. After you have written the half reactions, you balance the elements other than H and O first. So you really call in balancing chemical reactions class, if you recall in your Chem 1 then in your senior high, that you always balance oxygen and hydrogen last. You balance the other elements except these two. So they are balanced last. So it's the same thing when you're balancing half reactions. The half reactions I'm referring to are the oxidation and the reduction half reactions. Now, balance oxygen by adding water. So if there's a side, if there's a side in your two reactions that needs you to balance the oxygen present, you need to add water to that side. For example, one side of your chemical reaction has oxygen. The other side has no oxygen. So how will you balance it? You have oxygen in here and you don't have oxygen in here. You balance the oxygen by, by adding on the side that does not contain oxygen. What? Water. Water. Now, problema naman eh? You added water in this side. So what if, so your water already contains not only oxygen but also hydrogen. So you will have a problem in this side again because it does not have hydrogen. How will you balance hydrogen? 
you balance hydrogen by adding H+. Plus. You balance hydrogen, whatever hydrogen is uh, lacking or missing in one side of the reaction by adding H+. Plus. Now, this will be another concern again. If you add H+, plus, then the net charge on a particular side will not be equal to the net charge on the other. How do you make them equal? You can only make charges class in left side and in the right side of your chemical reaction equal, or you can balance them by adding electrons. So you need to add electron on a particular side. That way, the charge on that side would be equal to the other side. So take note of this, of how you're going to balance how you're going to balance oxygen, hydrogen, and the charge, the H plus charge in your uh, half reactions. Now, multiply the half reactions by integers. So if you have done already step two, you multiply the half reaction by integers so that the electrons gained by one reaction is the same as lost in the other. So if in your, if in your particular half reaction, you have added three electrons, and in the other particular reaction, you have added two electrons. Hindi na pariho. Kaya isa three ang imogin add ng isa two. So how do you cancel these two electrons? So there has to be a multiplier in the two separate half reactions. That way, whatever electron is added on one particular reaction will be canceled by another by the number of electrons on another reaction. Kaya ang goal of because the goal of multiplying your half reactions by a number is to eliminate the electrons that appear in the half reaction. So, kinalan plus pararijo ang number of electrons both in both of your half reactions. I think you will understand it better with a, an example. Then you add the half reactions, subtracting the things that appear on both sides. So, you know how to add reactions anyway. So, we add reactions and... Um, Species that appear in both sides of the reactions that are being added are being cancelled out or being subtracted. So make sure the equation is balanced according to mass and charge. So mass will have to account for the atoms and charge will need to account for the oxidation states. I will not first read this one in basic solution because I'd like us to go through this part. We go to this part by means of a particular example, okay? Now, this is the example that I asked you to read as well. So, example, balance the given reaction in acidic solution and in basic solution. So, for now, we will be doing letter A. So, in acidic solution. So, this is for letter A, okay? Uh, permanganate. This is your permanganate ion and your dichromate an ion, permanganate an ion, producing the manganese. Yeah, manganus specifically, okay, plus two. Manganus, uh, cation, and your carbon dioxide gas. So how do we balance in acidic solution? So to complete and balance the given equation, we first write the two half reactions. So step one, you write the half reactions. How will you be able to write the half reactions? One half reaction must have manganese on both sides of the arrow and the other must have the carbon on both sides of the arrow. So you have here... Uh, by the way, class, this is not dichromate. I thought this is chromium. This is carbon. So this is not a carbonate niya class, carbonate group. And C on both sides of the arrow. So you can see this is now our balance, balance chemical half reactions. Okay, let me go down. So in, okay, wait, wait, class. Let me clear writings. Okay, so you write the half reaction. So manganese, the permanganate and ion here, then that part on the product side, which has your manganese. Then you have that uh, bicarbonate here, and then the carbon dioxide in here. We next, so that's your first step. 
you write the half reactions. So we check which one is being reduced and which one is being oxidized before we go to the next. Because anyway, you know already. Now I'd like to ask, which is the reduction reaction and which is the oxidation reaction? I'm going to ask you. Which of the two is oxidation reaction and which one is reduction reaction? Or if I may say, how will you know which one is oxidation and which one is reduction? What will you do? Ang oxidation reaction is ang MnO4. Okay, then? Tapos ang reduction ang C2O4. Okay, so we will check ha, whether your first reaction is oxidation. Ano ganing oxidation reaction? What happens to the element? It? Reduce. It loses electrons. Electron. It loses electrons. So let's see how. I will assign charges here. Your permanganate and ion has a net charge of negative 1. So this is negative 2 for oxygen. So this is negative 8. So for this to be negative 1, this must be positive 7. The charge of your manganese in this permanganate ion is positive 7. Now from positive 7, it decreases to positive 2. So is it correct that this is oxidation? Remember, oxidation... Reduction, man. Correct, Reduction. correct. Because... When you speak of oxidation, it gives electrons. So kung mag-give siya electron, expected na siya tani nga magdako pag give niya ang iya plus sign. So what happened here? Magdamay siya. Oh. So this is actually reduction. Let's see whether it's really paired with an oxidation reaction. Now in here, in your uh, carbon dioxide, oxygen is negative 2 and carbon is to, for it to be neutral is positive 4. Okay, let me just uh, zoom this. Okay, okay let's not take a gamay class. Why won't it zoom? Anyway, so your, your carbon here is 4. Now in here, you have negative 2 for oxygen. Okay. The net charge is negative 2, right? So this is already negative 8. So I need to add 6 to negative 8 to have a net charge of negative 2. Then your carbon here originally is 3. Do you follow? Because this will be now 6 plus minus 8 would be a net charge of negative 2. So it's 3 to 4. So then... It's true that this one is oxidation. Why is it oxidation? Because your carbon increased, increased its oxidation state, meaning it gave away, in this case, one electron because now from positive 3, it became positive 4. So your half reactions, your half re reaction for your particular redox reaction to balance will always come in pairs, pairs of reduction oxidation reaction. Can we now proceed? So this is your reduction and this is your oxidation reaction. So this is the first step. You write the half reactions. Now we next complete and balance each half reaction. First, we balance all the atoms other than hydrogen and oxygen. So unahon ang iban except hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, now we do that. Uh, I will clear this one class. That way I can write. Let me increase this. Hindi siya ma-zoom. Anyway, hindi hindi siya class ma-zoom. Anyway, now, um, we balance the atoms other than oxygen. So in the first part, in the first half reaction here, manganese is one, manganese is one. We don't have any problem with manganese, right? Now, what about oxygen? We have oxygen here. We don't have any oxygen in here. So what's our rule in balancing oxygen? In balancing oxygen... Add water. Correct. Okay, you add water. So we add water. So we'll annotate. So we will add water. Now, how many moles of water will I add? Because I have four here. I will add. Four. I will rather four first here add 
placed here for. That balances already the oxygen. Now, may problema naman ta. Because if you look very closely, I introduce hydrogen here. There's no hydrogen in this side. How do we balance hydrogen? We add? By add hydrogen naman Okay, we add hydrogen cation. So, H plus. How many? That would be 8. Now, okay, ari palanta sa isa ka reaction. Now, we check the net charge in our reaction, half reactions. Okay. Uh, this one is positive 8 plus negative 1. So, this is positive 7, right? This one is only positive 2. I need to balance the charge in both sides. How will I do that? I cannot go up because this will be erased. How will I do that? The net charge on the left side is 8 minus 1. That's plus 7. The net charge on the right side is plus 2. So plus 7 plus 2, hindi man na equal. So how do I make them equal? What will I do? Balance charge with electrons. Okay, we balance the charge by adding electrons. Where do I add electrons and how many electrons will I add? The reactant means Okay, very five good. So I, so I will place here five electrons. Okay, now I have a net charge of positive two in here and I have a net charge of positive two in here. So, so far, I don't have any problem with this half reaction. I'll go to the second. Before I proceed to the second, any question? Okay, there's none. So, we go to other elements other than oxygen. So, carbon here, carbon here. They're not the same, right? So, I need to write. I need to write what? Water, miss. No. I need to balance carbon in the second half reaction. Okay? How do... coefficient. Okay. I'll place the coefficient to here. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So now I have balanced carbon. Then in this side, I have four oxygen, right? This side, how many oxygen do I have? Four naman Four Four man. Four man. Four man. Number of oxygen. Now we go to charges. This one has negative two. This one has none. Right? So how do I balance? What do I do? Add two electrons. electrons. Okay. We add here two electrons in the product. Now, second to the last step. What is the second to the last step before I combine the two half reactions? What will I do? Simplify. I will simplify. Make the electrons equal. I will look. So listen. Huh? I will look for a number that I will multiply in these two half reactions. Both sides that is that way. I will eliminate the reactant the electrons when I combine them later on. So what number will I multiply to this half reaction and to this half reaction that way I will eliminate the electrons. I want to eliminate the electrons. What would that be? What's the multiplier? And multiply here by what? It's the same rule that you use in balancing non-redox reaction. Multiply this by? Two. You multiply this by? Two. Two. You will multiply this by? Five. Five. Correct. So kung ano lang tong wala to sa isa, mo ng multiplier mo, nga rin di o. Ini siya, kaya wala siya five, ari din five, ba mo ng multiplier mo? Kaya mat-ten na siya, ini mat-ten. Di kunti mag-cancel sila nga dua. Okay? Now, uh, that's it. This is our reaction now. Do you get this? So I can, I can scroll down. When I scroll down, I need to clear everything. No more question? Okay. Naga second emotion sa Now we go down. So I will 
by the way, class, I will clear the annotation. Okay, you can see here the procedure that we did and that particular part in here. I did everything here. So you could see that one and you see the water and you see the H and you see the 5E and you see the 2E and you see this. Okay, can you follow? Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, two here and five here. If you multiply this one by two, this would be your corresponding half reaction. If you multiply this by five, this would be the corresponding half reaction. What's, the ha what's happening here? If one appears, a particular entry appears in both sides of your reaction, they get to be canceled out. So in this case, we cancel out this one, this one and this one. Okay, what else do we cancel out? Nothing anymore, right? So we copy, we copy, and we copy, and we have this, and we have this, and we have this. Now, class, if the problem is saying balance the redox reaction in acidic solution, you end here. This is already your answer if it's balancing in acidic solution. But then the problem is asking you need to balance also using basic solution. How will you do that? So it says here, I like to go back to the top part. If there's no more question here, I go back to this one later. I go back to the part wherein I discuss how to balance, how to balance uh, a redox reaction in basic solution. This is already the answer for letter A. The balanced redox reaction in acidic solution. No more question here. Okay, good. So I'll clear my drawing uh, markings. Then I'll go up because this is where I'd like to point out to you what you do in balancing uh, basic solution here. I said I will go back because I was looking at that time. I may not finish. Okay, steps in balancing redox reactions using the method of half reactions take note in basic solution. So if a reaction occurs in basic solution, one can balance it as if it occurred in acid. So the first thing that you do is balance it using the procedures in acid solution. Once the equation is already balanced, you add. So take note, I'd like to underline this to emphasize. You add hydroxide and ion to each side of the neutralize to neutralize the H plus in the equation and create water in its place. So whatever is the H plus or wherever is the H plus appearing in your uh, uh, balanced redox reaction in acidic solution, that's the side that you will add your hydroxide and ion. Because if you add hydroxide and ion to H+, plus, it will produce water. So you combine the OH negative and the H+, plus, the hydronium cation, they will form water. If this produces water on both sides, you might have to subtract water from each side of your chemical reaction. So I'll go back to our example a while ago. So balik na tato, kay digto na kita. So ari na tadiri ho, nan. So letter B requires that you, if you balance this in basic solution, whatever is the number of the hydronium cation or your H plus cation here, that should be the same number of hydroxide and ion that you will add. So I will add, ha? so based on that particular uh, instruction. So I have H plus here. On the reactant side, I have none on the product side. So this is where I'm going to add. So you have 16 OH negative. Okay. What will happen to this? This will be now, change the font. This will be now 16 water. Now, look very closely. 16 OH plus 16 H plus is 16 water. 16 water on the left, 8 water on the right. What will happen? Will happen? I read it a while ago. What is the suggestion? You subtract water. Kaini siya klaso, ara manda siya kwa, omuni siyang 8. 
kason iba na no ni siya it. So bilang wala na na bisang tubig nga may mabilin. No water will be seen here. You have eight moles of water on the left side. Do you get it? So we'll see. Ah. I'll clear the drawings, the markings, and we'll scroll down. Okay. Okay. You see this? You, uh, this is the one that we did. You took out the 8 here. You subtract it from the 16. So you have 8 remaining here. This is your answer for letter B. Balancing your redox reaction in basic solution. So if you see a, a procedure class, or let's say not a procedure, but if you're given a problem which requires you to balance a redox reaction in basic solution, tilawig na siyang imobrahon. Kay tiobrahon mo yung gidi ang acid na procedure, then you add this one for basic solution. Do you get it? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you have any concerns? Other concerns on this topic? Ano nang AQ, Ms. Sosa? Parenthesis. AQ. Oh, I would not like to answer that because it's something that you should know already. It's fundamental. Anybody who can answer that question, what is AQ in the element or in the compound? Aquas. Aqueous. 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 So meaning this particular element is in aqueous solution, meaning water. It's in water solution. Whenever you see AQ, okay? It's fundamental. When you, when you see an L, that's liquid. When you see a G, that's a gas. When you see an S, that's a solid. AQ means aqueous solution or in water solution. Okay, I have here uh, messages in the chat box. Aqueous. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so aqueous, I shall ever ask the question. Any question here? It's clear to everybody. My questions. So always, if you have apprehension, you won't get lost if you start with the steps. Assign oxidation numbers. Tell what is oxidized and reduce. Then write the two half reactions, the oxidation and the reduction half reactions. Balance elements other than hydrogen and oxygen first. Then balance oxygen by adding water. Balance hydrogen by adding the hydrogen cation. Balance the charge by adding electrons. To eliminate the electrons in the half reactions, multiply your half reactions by the proper uh, whole number multiplier to get rid of the electrons. And that's it. You have already balanced it in acidic solution. If it's basic solution, you will just add to the procedure that you have already in here in your um, acidic solution. So what do you do? You add an equal number of hydroxide anion to the hydrogen cation that is present in your uh, uh, added reaction. So remember, you already combined the two half reactions. So you only have one uh, overall reaction. To that overall reaction, you add the same number of hydroxide anion to the hydrogen cation that is present. The purpose is for you to produce water. Now, if you already produce water in one side and you see water on the other side, there's a need for you to simplify Okay, subtract if there's a need to subtract. And that's it. You already balance your redox reaction in basic solution. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, any question? So this is the one that you read, that I assigned for you to read. So any question? You need another break? I'd like to finish everything here. Is this still long? Oh, okay. So this will really require for you to have a breather. Sige, class. Um, let me check uh, the problem exercise that I prepared. If we can do with... Uh, okay, there's a question. If basic solution lang get missed, ma-proceed sa basic solution man? No. 
No, no, Mr. Lampto. Kung basic solution siya, mabalance ka redox reaction in basic solution, mas malawi gani, kaya you will have to start with the acidic solution procedure. So, obrahon mo gito ane ang tanan nga step sa acidic, then idugangan mo to sang para sa basic. Pero kung acidic lang, then there's no need for you to balance the H+. Or to address the presence of the H plus cation in any side of your overall reaction. Okay? So, sige, sige. Okay. That's good. Now, let me check uh, what is here. Okay. I will just uh, write the balance. Okay, sige. We will do number two and number three in what I have prepared for this afternoon. Anyway, this will not take more than 30 minutes. And I will give to you as an assignment number four and five. Wait, huh? Sige. Four, five, and six. I will place it as an assignment for you to do. That way you will have some exercise. Is that okay or you, you need another break? You need another break, Lass, before we answer number two and three. I have here two and three. Or we proceed. What's the pleasure of the class? No reaction? We proceed? Wala na sila reaksyon, no? Nakapoy na ka mo. Dali lang ni siya, class. Ang 3, 2 kag 3. Ako na lang ma-answer. Okay? Para ang inyo na lang answer na sa assignment as in group will be the last three numbers. This is also for you, okay? So, I will share it now to you. It's a continuation of the exercises. Uh, I will also share it uh, in the assignment part of your module later you if you want you can start again answering uh, para ma refresh ka mo of what we did this afternoon can you see number two and number three class yes me okay nakapoy naging ka mo nakapoy naman gani si miss ali galing tigin na sulduhan ko para matudlo sa inyo okay karon i-cut short ko ni ini lang ho aha sige you identify the species that is being oxidized and reduced in each of the following. Just tell me, okay? Uh, we can, I will increase the size. Okay, that's it. This is simple. Okay, tell me. Which is being reduced and which is being oxidized? Chromium or tin? Pwede lang gina, na oh, tuluko lang gina po. Okay, si chromium, <laughs> ano si chromium? Ano ni si chromium? Oxidized. 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 Okay, chromium is being oxidized because you see an increase in its positive, uh, shall I say, oxidation state. This one is being oxidized. Okay, so you can write it down and you can answer this later. What about letter B? Which is being... Which Mercury. is being oxidized. The in ang gin oxidized. Iron. Iron, Iron. Correct. Iron. Zero. Zero siya o. Oh. Nag plus three siya. So oxidized siya. Ang isa gin reduce. It was reduced. So from plus two to zero siya ang nagbaton sa ginhatag ni iron na electrons. Letter C. Letter C. Letter C. Ano ang gina-reduce? This one is negative 1 chlorine. So this one must be plus 3. Okay. Ara na. Ang gina-reduce means chlorine. Mm -hmm. Ang gina-reduce. Correct. Chlorine is ang gina-reduce because your astatine, oh, is this astatine or arsenic? Arsenic. Arsenic, arsenic <laughs> from 0 to plus 3. So it's oxidized. Your chlorine from 0 to negative 1. So, siyang nagbaton sa gingive ni arsenic. So, this is being reduced. Whereas, uh, arsenic is being oxidized. Okay? 
Ang mga nagahipos da, hopefully wala pa katulog. Okay? Now we go to number three. This will not take more than 10 minutes. What? What would you use here? Uh, are you going to use an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent? Here. Oh. This is negative two. So this must be plus five. This is negative two. So this must be plus four. Oh, hala. So what will you use? An oxidizing agent or a reducing agent? Um, reducing agent means. Very good. It's a reducing agent. Your chlorine decreases in its oxidation state. So you need a reducing agent because it's being reduced. Okay, man, and more reducing agent. Okay, for it to occur. What about this? This is negative 2, so this would be plus 6. So what happened? Reducing agent. Correct. Six. Still a reducing agent. Positive 6 to negative 2. Uh, you will need an oxidizing agent here. If from positive 6, na ibo siya be positive 8, nagdako pa din siya, so nag-oxidize siya. So kinanlan mo oxidizing agent. Okay, so in both letter A and B, you need a reducing agent. Okay, there are markings. Let me see. Ay, Mara, padua na lang. Dua na lang class. Oh, what about this? Ay, putang anta sa oxidation state para hapo sa inyo. Negative 2, this is plus 4. What do you need? Mara na. Oxidizing. Oxidizing. oxidizing agent because your manganese is being oxidized. Here, what do you need? This is negative one, so this must be plus two. This is zero. Oxidizing. Correct. So, din grupo, grupo. Yun yun din grupo, grupo niya. The first two, you need reducing agent. The last two, you need oxidizing agent. <clears throat> you like the chemistry now? You like chemistry now? Or ba sige ba nagtulog na gid? Okay. I don't blame you because my students then during pre-COVID time does not like this topic. Hopefully, it's the other way around in your case now. Okay, so class, I will give this four, five, and six to be done in groups and it will be submitted a week after. So, hindi ka magproblem. Mga ba, si ipasubmit ni Miss Ali subong a week. So, I give it today. It will be due next week as group, as group work. Or maybe I can give two weeks for this. This is longer. I have three numbers here. Okay? I think you have already submitted all the groupings. Uh, so, make sure that you are a member of a group so that it will also be credited to you. These three numbers I will post. Anyway, I will post this whole thing as an assignment, but I will indicate that you will only submit for four to six. Okay, I will stop sharing class. Okay. May pamangkot? Nakapoy nagig ka mo? You are my one, two. This is already my fourth hour today. So later tonight, hindi na si Ms. Ali Mapuslan. I still have another class 5.30 to 8.30. Anyway, you have any question? None? None, miss. None, miss. Sige, sige. Hopefully, uh, you understood the thing that I have shared with you this afternoon. After this, I will post also the recording. Yes.